So I'm sitting here in my backyard doing some testing of a new wood stove that I purchased for myself. I have a little pot of water on for boil and I thought I may as well use that water to make myself a cup of coffee. And I thought, you know, it's been a while since I've talked about how to make coffee, so I thought I would share with you three ways of making a very quick but still very delicious cup of coffee. If you're interested, keep watching. Okay, so each of the three ways that I'm going to show you uh, they're almost instant in the sense that when you go to use them on the trail or even at home, I guess, you don't have to do a lot of work right then. But you do have to do a little work before you go out in the woods. And what I mean by that, well, I think it'll become apparent when I show you what I have. So the first one I'm going to show you is something that I have shown before in some of my very early videos on coffee. And that is these empty paper tea bags, filter bags if you will. I buy mine at David's, David's Teas here in Halifax and you just buy them and you can put loose tea in them. It has a little drawstring at the top. You can put the amount of coffee you want in and drop it in your cup with the hot water and let it steep for however long you think it will come out with the best flavor and then you can dispose of them afterwards whatever way you see fit. So they work very well. Uh, they, you know, like I said, you do have to put a tablespoon or a tablespoon and a half of coffee in them at home, but you, then you can put them inside of a plastic bag and they're ready to go. And they're not expensive. The other two are things that I've used, uh, but they just haven't appeared on a video yet, so here's the first day, first time. This one is something I picked up at Princess Auto here in Halifax. And it's a small, well, they just call it a coffee filter, and it kind of works interesting. Not too much different from one that you might use for tea, and I expect you probably could use tea in this. But I'll bring it up to the camera. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the best way to get the best results out of these. But they come two to a package, and I'm going to put the link to where you can purchase them from Princess Auto. I don't know if they're, you can purchase them elsewhere. I suspect you can if you look for them. And it just has a little swing gate on top that allows you to put some coffee inside of this area close it shut and it kind of snaps into place and it's got a very very fine stainless steel mesh all the way around easy enough to do one at, well if you got two of these in a package and they're very inexpensive you can fill them up at home drop them into your bag when you get to the woods and you have your water ready up into the water, stir it around for however long you think it is to make the right strength and taste of coffee, and you're good to go. Then to empty the moat, open it up, hit the moat, and uh, you just rinse the moat under some water and you're ready to go in there for the next time. So that's not a bad little option. And, and as I said, there is some tricks for getting the most of it, but it is very simple. Now this one is something that was sent to me by one of my viewers some time ago. It's called the Jokeri coffee press and he thought it would be something similar to the AeroPress and the way it works. It's similar but it, you know in that it has it's what they call a full immersion. All the coffee is in all of the water but uh, uh, it's similar but it's different in a couple of ways. So to use this it comes it's in two pieces. There's the chamber for the coffee. Again it has stainless steel mesh around all of those openings put the coffee inside. I'll show you this before I close it up so you can see here's the press portion. It has kind of a plunger that allows you to push the water through the coffee. Put that on top. Put this inside of your hot water. Let it steep for however long you feel is a good time and then press. And I find that it actually trying to get back in frame. I find it works better that if you kind of pump it a few times to get the water to move through the coffee. In fact, this is the one I'm going to use today just to demonstrate how it works. All right, so let me share with you the tricks that I've learned and used in actually all three of these the tea bags, the little stirring filter, as well as the Chilkeri coffee press, and the way that I think that it uh, brings the best flavor out of the coffee. So, to start with, you have to use a good brand of coffee or a good roast of coffee. I'm still using the Rampage coffee. I still find it one of the nicest coffees that uh, I can find locally. One of the freshest, certainly one of the freshest coffees. So this is just a little tin that I put some freshly ground coffee in and that's probably the second tip is, so the first one again is good coffee. The second one is freshly ground. Don't grind this a week before. Grind it the day of. You're going out for your hike because the fresher the grind is, the better the tasting cup of coffee. So the one, the more important tricks here, after the coffee itself, 
is the grind. Now, if you can see, I'll bring it up to the camera, hopefully. The grind I have is fairly coarse. It's quite coarse and that's intentional. This is something you might use with a percolator or if you're making coffee, uh, well, French press, yeah, you could use it this coarse. Or if you're making cowboy coffee, you want some fairly coarse coffee. So I want to use fairly coarse coffee in the each of these. And the next trick is to not, oh, wasting coffee, more careful is not to overfill it. So I probably have maybe just a tiny bit more. I probably have a tablespoon, maybe a tablespoon of coffee in here. And you can see I didn't fill this all the way to the top. And that's true of all three of these. So the reason why you don't fill the coffee all the way to the top and the reason why you want it rather coarsely ground is, well, a couple of things. One, you want the water to mix with all of the coffee. If it's too tightly packed, if it's too finely ground, the water may not, probably will not, get to all of the coffee. So you want all of the coffee sitting in the water, at least in contact with the water, so it can extract as much of the flavor as possible. Another reason is, of course, when the water moves into, when the water comes in contact with the coffee, it will swell up some, not a lot, but it does a little bit. If you fill this to the very top, you're not going to allow any room for expansion of the coffee in it. So you want the coffee and the water to be able to move around together inside this device as well as inside of your cup. All right, let's put the top of it aside. Screw this on. Now, cup in, get my hot water. Put my hot water in. Uh, how much? Well, that's, that's an experiential thing. You kind of have to decide for yourself. I'm doing about, yeah, every bit of eight ounces here. So I have about eight ounces. Take my press, drop it in. There's a few air bubbles rising because of course there's air trapped inside of the press. And already I can see it darkening up. I'll share it with you when it's ready. And after I think some of the most of the water has moved through the coffee, then I can just kind of pump it a few times. Now, the longer the coffee is in contact with the water, Yes, the stronger it will get, but it'll also start to get bitter. So there's a point at which, and that only comes from experience, where you press out the coffee. Yes, yeah, so there's a point at which where if you leave your coffee in contact with the water too long, it starts to get bitter. So again, experience based on the grind, based on the coffee, based on the amount of coffee that is as well. And uh, yeah, how long should it be in contact with the water? That's something you have to kind of learn for yourself as you go along. There it is, it was just that easy. I have my fresh hot cup of coffee as I said out here on this cold January day, testing out my new little wood stove. Okay, that's all I wanted to share with you today. Three ways of making coffee while you're on the trail, or at home for that matter, that don't take a lot of time, but still produce a reasonably good tasting cup of coffee. For more information on those three items that I shared with you, I'll put them in the show notes below. And if you have any questions about those or anything else or any suggestions, please put those in the comments section. Now, you may be interested in what stove it is that I'm testing. Well, let me give you a quick look. The new pack stove from Simple Theory Gear. So I've only had the stove a very short period of time. I still have a lot of work to do to test it before I can bring a review video to you. But that'll be in an upcoming video at some point. So until that occurs, get out and explore. Take that path less traveled. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now.